Vancouver Resource Investment Conference 2020 here in Vancouver. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Commodity TV here for you. And we are now at the booth of Silver Corp. And we want to talk to Lon Shaver, the vice president of the company, yeah, to give us an insight and update into this terrific silver and base metal company. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. And uh, 2019, how was the year so far for uh, you guys? It's been a good year. We've uh, we've been able to increase our, our production levels from last year. Uh, not huge gains, but uh, but very respectable gains, and mm -hmm. uh, we've maintained our profitability. So we've been able to put up good numbers uh, mm -hmm. in the quarters that we've reported so far. Yeah, fantastic. When um, you say maintain profitability, can you comment a little bit on the cost structure of the company? Yeah, I mean, generally, if you if you look at uh, when we look at our costs, we generally look at on an all-in uh, cost per ton of, mm -hmm. of uh, ore mined, and that we've we've generally um, been consistent over the last few years. And based on the pricing, that translated into um, an all-in sustainable cost per ounce of approximately $4 for the last quarter. Mm -hmm. That was September. Our fiscal year end is in March, so we'll be doing our year-end numbers uh, subsequent to that. And mm -hmm. we are comfortable with our, our target of roughly six and a half million ounces of silver for the Okay, year. So, but, but you do also some lead and zinc, right? Yes, uh, okay. as byproducts, we're targeting approximately 90 million pounds of lead zinc combined nice. as well. Okay, fantastic. Wow, that's... Uh I would say a nice amount of uh, money uh, flowing into the company, <laughs> of good. course, yeah. No, <laughs> that is great. Super. Um, how was your exploration uh, situation last year? Because I think it's always important that what you produce, you have to replace at least, right? Yeah, we're, we're, very, uh, we're very comfortable with our track record on that. Uh, we've put out some new numbers uh, l last year in terms of an updated technical report on the GC mine. Mm -hmm. That's the smaller of the two mines. Uh, but if you look at our news releases um, late last year, in the fall of uh, 2019, we actually had even some further results at GC, as well as some drill results at the, some of the mines at Ying. And uh, we're very comfortable that we've done a good job in terms of resource and reserve replacement. Mm -hmm. And uh, that should be shown out in a technical report that, that comes okay. out later in the year. So but what is the overall mine life? Well, at um, so far? GC, it's, I believe, from the technical report, in excess of 12 years. Mm. And at Ying, it's in excess of 15. And that's just on the proven and probable reserves. Mm -hmm. So then we have resources on top of that. Mm, fantastic. Great. Um, Let's go 2020 and beyond a little bit. Um, any plans, any changes in the company, for example, or do you say, no, we work our minds, what we have, we are fine on that, we yeah, optimize them, we do our exploration, we are good, or do you have any plans to say, mm, maybe we look outside China, we want to acquire some new projects, stuff like that? Well, I think uh, first off, um, we have an approximate 29% stake in New Pacific Metals, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a company that's generated a lot of excitement and an, oh, yeah. an interest in the marketplace. They are targeting to have a resource, an initial resource, uh, at the end of this first quarter or early second mm -hmm. quarter, um, and then the plan is to complete a PEA by the end of the year. So that's something being a 29% a shareholder will be a catalyst for us as well mm -hmm. in terms of watching their progress. Yeah. Uh, secondly, we're always on the lookout for projects around the world that meet our criteria. Mm -hmm. So if we find something that we like and we can close a transaction, that would mm -hmm. be newsworthy. But even from our core assets, uh, you know, as I mentioned, that exploration work, that's ongoing. And uh, we're really optimistic that we can continue to develop these assets mm -hmm push their lives out even further mm -hmm. and in improve the economics even mm -hmm. on a near-term basis. Okay. So those sorts of, that kind of work is ongoing um, and there's different capital projects at the mines mm -hmm. to enhance their profitability. Fantastic. Can we talk a little bit uh, about financial numbers, I would call it, yeah? So, uh, for example, do you have any debt on the balance sheet? No, nope, we have no debt. Debt free, that's fantastic. Debt and cash yeah. of 135 million US. Wow, that's very comfortable, I would say. <laughs> it's good, it's, it's helpful, yes. And, and if, uh, I, if I have that correct, you pay a dividend, we right? We do, two yeah. and a half cents US mm -hmm. uh, on an annual basis. Yeah, any thoughts to raise that? Uh, there's certainly questions about that, uh, especially <laughs> given the cash balance. But what we're yeah. uh, really looking at trying to find a way to, to grow and yeah. look at assets. So, so for the time being, I think at the board level, they're comfortable leaving things the way they are. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on where silver prices go yeah. and what kind of cash flow we generate, that may be something that we revisit uh, okay. at some point. Super, fantastic. What's your view on the silver market itself? I mean, you are a producer, yeah? so you are part of the, uh, I would call it silver food chain. Yeah? Um, what's your view by, yeah, by yourself, uh, or for your company, of course? You are in China. China is consuming a lot of silver, of course. Yeah? E-mobility is consuming a lot, new RFID technology. Uh, whatever computer technology, etc. So I hear from every side, oh, we have a deficit in the silver production worldwide. 
What's your view on that? And still, we are at eighteen dollars silver. Should be at thirty or forty. Well, I think uh, I think the fact that, as you as you pointed out, silver has sort of a, a bit of a hybrid uh, approach to it or aspect mm -hmm. to it, being that it's a precious metal. So when there's instability in the world, people looking at a store of value in gold. People often look at silver as being sort of the more uh, the sort of the higher beta precious metal in terms of uh, share price response. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side, there is that industrial component, uh, given that the move to electrification, uh, solar panels. So there is a core um, industrial demand that I think with the economies recently has been a bit soft. Um, but there's that potential that if trade wars get mm -hmm. sorted out and, and the economies get going there again, be, yeah. that industrial component will also contribute yeah. to the silver price. So, I mean, we try not to be uh, uh, forecasters of the, of the silver price, yeah. uh, just more focused on making our company the best it can be, mm -hmm. no matter what the silver price is. Yeah, that's right. But you always should be pre uh, prepared for the worst. Exactly. Right? <laughs> that, correct. Maybe a question aside on the more macroeconomic uh, question, as you are working in China. So what's the situation economic-wise in China? Because I just heard that uh, they are importing 10 and a half million barrels per day oil. And honestly, that's the highest level ever they are doing. So to me, I can, do not believe that China is going downwards in the economy, because otherwise you would never import that, ma that much oil. So my question is more like, how do you see the economy going? How do you see China going? I, I, think, uh, I think China, and I, I certainly wouldn't call myself an expert in that topic, mm -hmm. but I think uh, China is doing fine. Uh, certainly the economy has a sort of a centralized uh, decision and structure, so that mm -hmm. helps to steer things in a way um, to, to optimize the, the benefit of the, of, of the country. And, and I think um, that um, they'll make adjustments depending on what kind of growth targets and what mm -hmm. types of areas they need to stimulate. So I know that um, having been there this fall, um, Things are going well. Things right? are going well. Yeah, things are busy, I thought, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I, I can't say that I detected any uh, yeah. anything but uh, yeah. a positive tone. Yeah, fantastic. To, to the Great. So then, all the best for you, and uh, keep us posted with uh, further good results, Certainly good we'll production, do. and uh, keep on the dividend because that's really important. Uh, people love it a lot, and uh, of course, if there's room to raise it, do it. <laughs> Appreciate the interest and the feedback. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Lon Shaver, the vice president of Silvercorp. And you heard it, the company is full on track. No debt, $135 million in the bank, two and a half US cents dividend they are paying. So those are fantastic numbers. Also, in addition, approximately 90 million pounds of uh, lead and zinc they are producing as a byproduct at 6.6 million ounces of silver. And so that, that's a great company out of China doing a really good business. I suggest you check it out. And thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Vancouver.